Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this lecture on calcium transporters. In this lecture, I will be discussing about the various calcium transporters that increase and decrease cellular calcium. This is the cartoon of a cell. We know that the normal intracellular calcium concentration is about 100 nanomoles per liter. The normal extracellular calcium concentration is about 1 millimoles per liter. So, there is a concentration as well as electrical gradient for the influx of calcium from outside to the inside of the cell. But we know that the cell is impermeable to calcium at rest. So, various transporters are present on the cell membrane which facilitate the entry of calcium from outside to the inside. So, these are the L type calcium channels, T type calcium channels, store operated calcium channels and the non specific cation channels. Calcium may also be released into the cytoplasm from the various cellular organelles like the sarcoplasm reticulum or the SR and the endoplasm reticulum or the ER through rhinodin receptors and IP3 receptors. So, large increases in intracellular calcium concentrations are known as calcium transients. Localized calcium releases can also happen in cells like the SI nodal cells and this is an important pacemaking mechanism and such calcium releases are known as calcium sparks. If the intracellular calcium concentration remains high, it can lead to cell death and therefore, the cells have evolved mechanisms to clear this increased intracellular calcium. So, there are calcium clearance mechanisms present on the cell membrane that can remove calcium like the sodium calcium exchanger or the NCX and the plasma membrane calcium ATPase or the PMCA. Calcium may also be cleared back into the organelles like SR through something known as the sarcoendoplasm reticulum calcium ATPase. Now, the amplitude, frequency and time course of the calcium rise in the cell can code for various cellular functions like muscle contraction, neuromuscular transmission, synaptic transmission, learning and memory, secretions of hormones and various other functions. So, in this session, we will be discussing in detail all these different calcium transporters. Now, one important calcium influx pathway for the cell is through something known as the L type calcium channel. So, this is a channel present on the cell membrane and it is a voltage gated channel. So, at rest when the cell is at resting membrane potential, these channels are closed. But when the cell is depolarized, these channels open and allow the entry of calcium into the cell. This is a picture of a rat ventricular cardiomyocyte that we have isolated in the laboratory. And this cell was subjected to whole cell patch clamp technique and the membrane potential was depolarized to various depolarizing voltages. This was done to record calcium currents. And these are families of calcium currents that we recorded by subjecting this cell to patch clamp. You can see that the magnitude of the calcium current increased with increasing depolarizing voltages. These currents are also long lasting and therefore, these channels are also called L type or the long lasting calcium channels. This large invert current that you see on the left is sodium current. Now, if the cell is kept depolarized for a longer period, the magnitude of the calcium current decreases and this property of the calcium channel is known as inactivation. In this picture, we can see the current voltage relationships or the IV curve for the calcium current that is passed through the L type calcium channel. So, we can see that the channel is opened at about minus 40 millivolt and with more depolarizing voltages, 
the magnitude of the current increased. It reached the peak of about uh, peak at about uh, 0 millivolt of depolarization. So, these channels are opened at a more positive potential and therefore, these channels are also known as high voltage activated calcium channels. Now, when the membrane is depolarized beyond plus 120 millivolt, this inward calcium current becomes outward. So, this is the reversal potential for the uh, calcium or the equilibrium potential for calcium. Now, let us discuss the functions of these L type calcium channels. So, where are these L type calcium channels present? So, this is the cartoon of a cardiac muscle action potential and L type mediated calcium entry is seen in the plateau phase or the phase 2 of the cardiac muscle action potential. So, we know that the calcium entry is long lasting and therefore, the phase 2 is prolonged because of this long lasting calcium entry. And because of that the whole cardiac muscle action potential has a wider action potential duration. Now, we said calcium channels can inactivate and therefore, they are responsible for the refractory period of the heart. The calcium that enters through L type calcium channels during the plateau phase is also important for the cardiac muscle contraction. Now, this is a picture of SA node action potential. L type calcium channels are also present in the SA node and they are responsible for the late part of the diastolic depolarization phase of the pacemaker potential and also the rising phase or the depolarization phase of the pacemaker action potential. This is a cartoon of a cardiac muscle cell. So, in the cardiac muscle cell we can see this is the rhinoid receptors present on the sarcoplasm reticulum and this is the cell membrane which invaginates into the cell forming the T tubule. So, when the muscle gets depolarized, it goes deep into the cell through the T tubules and activate the L type calcium channels present on the T tubule. So, when these are activated, they open and calcium enters the cell. This calcium then binds to these rhinoid receptors on the SR causing calcium release from the SR. So, the rise in intracellular calcium then causes the sliding of the actin and myosin filaments resulting in contraction. So, calcium is important for cardiac muscle contraction, particularly the calcium that is present outside. So, extracellular calcium is very important for cardiac muscle contraction. And this was discovered by a British physiologist called Sidney Ringer. So, he was working on these frog hearts and he found that whenever he used solutions that were prepared by him, which did not contain calcium, the hearts were not working. But when we used solutions prepared by his uh, technician, the hearts were contracting. He later realized that he was actually taking water from the tap and using for the experiments. So, the London tap water contained large amounts of calcium and that calcium was able to cause the contraction of the heart. Now, various physiological salt solutions are named after him. One of them is the Ringer solution that we use uh, physiology laboratory for various experiments. Another solution called the Ringer's lactate is used in the hospital as an IV fluid. Both these solutions are named after Sidney Ringer. Now, L type calcium channels are also present in the neuromuscular junction, in the beta cells and also in the neuronal synapses. So, now let us see what is the function in the neuromuscular junction. So, this is the axon terminal, this is the um, motor end plate. So, when the action potential reaches the nerve terminal, there is depolarization of the nerve terminal leading to the influx of calcium and there is exocytosis of vesicles containing acetylcholine and that will lead to the muscle contraction. Here we have the synapse, this is the presynaptic neuron, this is the postsynaptic neuron. Again here the action potential reaches the presynaptic nerve terminal or the neuronal terminal and causes a depolarization leading to opening of L type calcium channels and calcium entry. This then leads to the exocytosis of vesicles containing neurotransmitters and leads to neuronal transmission. This is the beta cell, again depolarization of the beta cell of the islets of Langerhans 
causes the opening of L-type calcium channels here, leading to calcium entry and exocytosis of vesicles containing insulin. Now, another calcium influx pathway for the cell is something known as the T-type calcium channel. Now, these channels are present in the SA node of uh, the heart and like the L-type calcium channels, these are also voltage gated calcium channels. So, they are closed at rest and when the cell membrane is depolarized, these channels open allowing the entry of calcium into the cell. The calcium entry through these channels happen very fast. So, these channels open and close very quickly and therefore, the calcium uh, entry is very transient and therefore, these channels are also known as transient calcium channels or the T-type calcium channels. Now, these channels are also uh, opened uh, with the depolarization like the L-type calcium channels, but compared to the L-type calcium channels, these channels are opened at a more negative membrane potential and therefore, channels are also known as low voltage activated calcium channels. Now, these calcium channels are present on the SA node of the heart. This is the SA node action potential and these calcium channels are responsible for calcium entry during the early phase of the diastolic depolarization of the pacemaker potential. Now, another calcium influx pathway for the cell is through something known as the store operated calcium channels. So, these channels are seen in uh, cells like T lymphocytes and when the T lymphocyte endoplasmic reticulum dumps calcium or when the calcium is depleted from the endoplasmic reticulum, these calcium channels open and there is a calcium influx into the cell which then refills the endoplasmic reticular calcium stores. So, the protein that recognizes a depletion of the ER calcium store is something called STEM1. STEM stands for stromal interaction molecule. So, this molecule is physically coupled with the store operated calcium channel. So, when there is store depletion, this physical interaction will cause the opening of these store operated channels. So, these store operated channels are made of proteins called ORI1 and ORI is named after the gatekeepers of heaven which are mentioned in Greek, uh, Greek mythology. Now, the calcium entry through these channels are also known as capacitative calcium entry or the store operated calcium entry, calcium release activated calcium currents or the eye crack. So, these are important for the T lymphocyte for its immune function. Another calcium influx pathway for the cell is through something known as non-specific cation channels. One example is the TRP channels or the transient receptor potential channels. Now, non-specific cation channels can conduct sodium, potassium and calcium. So, here we see a cartoon of a renal tubular epithelial cell, this is the lumen of the renal tubule, this is the renal epithelial cell. So, we know that vitamin D causes calcium absorption from the renal tubules and that is by insertion of a class of TRP channels known as TRP V5 on the apical surface of the renal epithelial cell. So, this favors calcium entry into the renal epithelial cell. Vitamin D is also important for the reabsorption of calcium from the uh, intestine. Here we can see an intestinal epithelial cell, this is the lumen. So, under the influence of vitamin D, TRP V6 channels are inserted on the apical surface of the intestinal epithelial cells. Here again they cause calcium influx into the cell and calcium absorption. Now, TRP channels also implicated in various sensations or they are present in the sensory neurons and mediate various sensations like pain and temperature. So, TRP V1 channel is responsible for the transmission of pain. This V stands for vanilloid and these receptors or channels are opened by uh, something known as capsaicin which is present in the chili peppers. So, that is what which uh, gives you that uh, heat or the uh, spicy feeling when you take chili or pepper. 
TRP V3 and V4 mediate sensation of warmth, TRP M8 mediate the sensation of cold. Now these TRP channels were discovered in Drosophila, the common fruit fly. So these channels were present in the photoreceptors of Drosophila and whenever light was uh, shown on these photoreceptors, these channels opened and produced a transient change in the receptor potential of these photoreceptors. That is why they are known as transient receptor potential channels or the TRP channels or the trip channels. Calcium influx can also happen through another non-specific cation channel called the NMDA receptor. These receptors are present on synapses in the neuronal synapses. Here we have a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron. This presynaptic neuron releases a neurotransmitter called glutamate. So that glutamate comes and binds to its receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. So the normal glutamate receptors are the AMPA receptors and the NMD receptors. When the glutamate binds to the AMPA receptors, these channels open and sodium enters the postsynaptic cell causing a depolarization of the postsynaptic neuron. Now the NMD receptor is normally blocked by magnesium which is blocking the pore. But when the cell gets depolarized, this magnesium will move out and the magnesium block is relieved. This then favors the calcium entry into the cell and such calcium entry into the postsynaptic neuron is thought to be responsible for the long term potentiation which is the mechanism that causes learning and memory. So we have discussed various calcium transporters that take calcium from outside to the inside. Uh, these transporters were located on the cell membrane. Now we will discuss the various calcium transporters present on the uh, organelles. So we will discuss about the calcium release from the skeletal muscle from the sarcoplasmic reticulum or the SR through something known as the rhinodin receptors. So there are different classes of rhinodin receptors, rhinodin receptor 1, 2 and 3. The type of rhinodin receptor present on the skeletal muscle is the rhinodin receptor 1. So this is the cartoon of the skeletal muscle. When the skeletal muscle is depolarized, the depolarization travels through the membrane and it reaches into the cell through the T tubules and they activate a class of L type calcium channels present on the T tubule called dihydropyridine receptors. These are like L type calcium channels, they are opened by voltage or depolarization. They can also conduct calcium but that calcium conduction is not important for their function. So when this DHPR is activated by a membrane depolarization, it causes the opening of rhinodin receptors present on the SR and calcium is released from SR into the cytoplasm. So it is known that DHPR and rhinodin receptors are physically coupled and when there is a depolarization of the T tubule there is some conformational change that happens to the DHPR which physically opens the rhinodin receptors causing calcium release into the cytoplasm. And that calcium will then cause the sliding of actin and myosin leading to a contraction of the muscle. So even though calcium may be entering uh, the cell through the DHPR, it is not important for the skeletal muscle contraction. We know this because if we take a skeletal muscle and if it is bathed with an extracellular solution which does not contain calcium, even if you stimulate in such a situation, the skeletal muscle will contract, showing that the external calcium is not important. What is important is the depolarization of DHPR that is sufficient for the muscle to contract. So the depolarization of this DHPR will lead to the physical coupling with the receptors causing calcium release from the uh, SR and this mode of calcium release is something known as the voltage induced calcium release or the VICR. So the depolarization of the T tubule is sufficient for the activation of DHPR to cause calcium release. There is no need for calcium entry from outside to inside to cause calcium release which is seen in the case of cardiac muscle. Now let us discuss the calcium release from the cardiac muscle SR that is through the rhinoreceptor type 2. 
again here the cardiac muscle gets depolarized, it reaches the T tubule and activates the L type calcium channels present here. Now, calcium entry through these channels is important. The calcium enters the cell, binds to the rhinoid receptors on the cell in the SR and these rhinoid receptors open causing calcium release into the cytoplasm. Now, this in increase in intracellular calcium then causes the sliding of the filaments. So, this mode of calcium release is known as the calcium induced calcium release or CICR. So, this is different from the voltage induced calcium release that we saw in the case of skeletal muscle. So, in the skeletal muscle there is no need for external calcium to enter the cell for skeletal muscle to contract whereas, in the case of cardiac muscle calcium should come from outside to inside to trigger calcium release from the SR. Now, rhinoid receptors in certain cells can spontaneously release calcium like in the SA nodal cells and such spontaneous calcium release from the SR is an important rhythm generating mechanism. Now, let us discuss the calcium release from the smooth muscle. In the smooth muscle calcium store is the endoplasmic reticulum and calcium release happens through certain channels like IP3 receptors which are similar to the rhinoid receptors. So, here we see a cartoon of a smooth muscle cell, it is a vascular smooth muscle cell. This is a vasoconstrictor, so this is a ligand and the cell is having a receptor for this ligand and when the ligand comes and binds to this receptor, these receptors are G protein coupled. So, there is activation of GQ G protein and activation of phospholipase C which converts phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate to IP3 and diacylglycerol. Now, the IP3 that is formed binds to the IP3 receptors and cause calcium release. This then causes the sliding of the actin myosin filaments leading to a contraction of the vascular smooth muscle. So, this is the mechanism of action of various vasoconstrictors like noradrenaline which acts through alpha receptors, ADH or the antidiuretic hormone or the vasopressin that acts through V1 receptors and the angiotensin 2 which acts through angiotensin 2 receptors. All of these act through this mechanism to cause vascular smooth muscle contraction. So, till now we have discussed the various calcium uh, release mechanisms and calcium influx mechanisms which increased intracellular calcium. Now, we will discuss the various calcium clearance mechanisms. We said uh, increased intracellular calcium can be toxic to the cell and can cause cell death. So, the cells have developed mechanisms to clear calcium. So, one important calcium clearance mechanism is the CIRCA. CIRCA stands for sarcoendoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. So, this is present in the SR of cardiac and skeletal muscle. So, we have seen that depolarization of these muscles lead to calcium release from the intracellular calcium stores and the muscle will contract. And for the muscle to relax, this calcium has to be cleared and in the case of the skeletal and cardiac muscle, this calcium clearance is done by something called the sarcoendoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPS or the CIRCA. So, this pumps calcium from the cytoplasm to the inside of the SR. So, inside of the SR has high concentration of calcium. So, this is pumping from outside where there is low concentration to high concentration. And since it is pumping against a concentration gradient or it is a uphill transport, it requires the use of ATP. And therefore, this is an enzyme which has ATPase activity. So, CIRCA stands for Sarco endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. So, the ATPase activity of this transporter will hydrolyze ATP and utilize that energy for this uphill transport. The calcium that comes into the cell is then bound to a protein called calcequestrin and it is stored within the cell until further use. Now, this circa activity is under check or it is kept under check by another protein called phospholamban which is associated with the circa protein. So, the phospholamban reduces the pumping efficiency of circa. So, it decreases the speed at which calcium is being pumped from the cytoplasm into the SR. So, it acts like a brake on the pumping action of circa. But when the cardiac muscle is stimulated by sympathetic stimulation, then there is an increase in protein kinase A 
which will then cause phosphorylation of this phospholamban. This phosphorylation of phospholamban will lift the inhibitory effect of phospholamban on the circa. So, that the pumping efficiency of circa will improve and it will be pumping calcium at a faster rate. So, the faster pumping will lead to faster relaxation. So, this is the basis for the lucytropic action of the sympathetic uh, nervous system effect on the heart. Another calcium clearance mechanism present on the cell is the plasma membrane calcium ATPase. So, this is a transporter present on the cell membrane. So, imagine this is a cardiac cell and if there is an increase in intracellular calcium, this transporter present on the cell membrane can clear that calcium. So, it pumps calcium from inside to the outside of the cell. Again, it is pumping from an area of low concentration which is the inside of the cell to an area of high concentration which is the outside of the cell. So, since again it is pumping against a concentration gradient, it needs to use the ATP. So, again this is plasma membrane calcium ATPase. So, it has ATPase activity which hydrolyzes ATP and utilizes that energy for pumping calcium uphill. Another calcium clearance mechanism present on the cell is the sodium calcium exchanger. This is also present on the cell membrane. So, imagine this is a cardiac cell and if the calcium inside the cell rises, then NCX is activated and NCX will move one calcium from inside to outside and take in three sodium ions from outside to inside. So, this is called the forward mode of sodium calcium exchanger. Now, we can see that one calcium ion is going out and three sodium ions are moving in. So, there is a loss of two positive charges and there is a gain of three positive charges. So, the net gain is one positive charge and therefore, the sodium calcium exchange is electrogenic when it is functioning in the forward mode. So, in the forward mode, there is a net gain of one positive charge and this action of sodium calcium exchange is important for the pacemaking function. So, NCX is an important pacemaking mechanism of the heart. We will be discussing uh, about this mechanism in more detail when we discuss about the cardiac muscle action potentials. So, here we can see a cartoon of a SA nodal action potential and the NCX mediated inward current is usually seen in the diastolic depolarization phase of the pacemaker potential. Now, NCX can also operate in uh, the reverse mode that is called the reverse mode NCX. So, we will see that. So, again uh, this is a cardiac cell, we have the sodium potassium pump present on the cell membrane. We know that sodium potassium pump pumps 3 sodium from inside to the outside and takes in 2 potassium from outside to inside. Now, various drugs like digitalis and obin can block this sodium potassium pump and this will cause an increase in intracellular sodium concentration. The increased intracellular sodium is then cleared by the sodium calcium exchanger. So, 3 sodium ions are moved out of the cell and 1 calcium ion is taken into the cell. So, this mode of operation of the NCX is called the reverse mode. Now, this mechanism is taken into advantage by drugs like digitalis which were earlier used for the treatment of cardiac failure because they will increase the intracellular calcium levels and thereby they will increase the contractility of the heart and thereby the ejection fraction. Another important calcium clearance mechanism is the mitochondria. So, mitochondria has various transporters which can uh, either increase or decrease the intracellular calcium. So, when there is an increase in intracellular calcium, the mitochondrial calcium uniporter which is present on the inner mitochondrial membrane can mop up calcium. It can clear calcium from the inside and take it into the mitochondria. Mitochondria can also act as a source for calcium and that is through the NCX which is present on the inner mitochondrial membrane. So, this can cause calcium release into the cytoplasm in exchange for sodium. So, we have come to the end of this session on calcium transporters. So, we were discussing about the various calcium transporters. So, let us summarize what we have learned so far. So, we know that the calcium transporters can either increase the intracellular calcium levels or decrease the intracellular calcium levels. Now, the calcium transporters that increase the intracellular calcium levels are present either on the cell membrane or on the organelles. So, these are the calcium transporters present on the cell membrane which increase intracellular calcium. So, we discussed about the 
L type calcium channels, the T type calcium channels, the store operated calcium channels, the non specific cation channels like the TRP channels and the NMDA receptors. The calcium transporters present on the cell organelles like the endoplasmic reticulum and the sarcoplasmic reticulum are the iron receptors and the IP3 receptors. Now there are various calcium transporters that decrease the intracellular calcium concentration. Some of these are present on the cell membrane and some of these are present on the organelles. So the calcium clearance mechanisms present on the cell membrane are the plasma membrane calcium ATPase and the sodium calcium exchanger. Remember sodium calcium exchanger can also operate in the reverse mode and thereby increase intracellular calcium. Now calcium transporters present the organelles are the circa present on the SR and the mitochondrial calcium unipotter present in the mitochondria. Now mitochondria also contains an NCX which can release calcium into the cytoplasm. Thank you.